ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده 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 لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم my dear brothers and elders i welcome you with the islamic greetings assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may peace blessings and mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of us we start by praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful most compassionate allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our khaliq malik and razik he is the only one to be worshiped and time and again he has sent down messengers for the guidance of humanity and just before i begin my talk just to clarify some points on the aqida that we live in a western society where we live with different people different cultures different religions different ideologies so we should be very very clear about our own muslim identity and muslim aqaid and muslim ideology and this is one thing we need to be proud of we need to be of pride we should feel pride in our aqaid we should feel we should feel the essence that this is something which brings us closer to our creator which brings us closer to submission to our creator allah subhanahu wa taala and one of those things is that allah subhanahu wa taala time and again has sent down messengers but those messenger were meant for that period and for that time and similarly one of the mighty messengers in islam that was sent was jesus peace be upon him and jesus peace be upon him unlike what many other modern christians and jews believe hazrat isa alaihi salam jesus peace be upon him is one of the mighty messengers he was given many miracles and his birth was miraculous he was born without a father without any male intervention and allah subhanahu wa taala is khaliq he can create things from without anything without any means he can create things and even these words of kun fayakun these are for our own understanding allah subhanahu wa taala gave to hazrat isa alaihi salam miraculous birth without any male intervention just like allah subhanahu wa taala says that it was it was as if hazrat adam alaihi salam was created hazrat adam alaihi salam was created without any parents he was the first human being he stood on this earth without any father or mother without any male or female intervention similarly it is easy for allah subhanahu wa taala to create hazrat isa alaihi salam without any male intervention he was created without any father but that led to confusion that jesus may be god but we believe that jesus is not god he is an abdullah he is a servant of allah he is a creation of allah subhanahu wa taala and just like allah subhanahu wa taala created hazrat hawa without any female intervention she was created out of the ribs of hazrat adam alaihi salam and similarly allah subhanahu wa taala can create anything from nothing with that my dear brothers today i want to discuss two very important concepts that are there in islam and one of the concept that i am going to discuss and these two concepts are interlinked with each other the concept of kasrat and the concept of baraka people think in the time and age today they run towards kasrat which is abundance commonly known as abundance people think that we will be successful in this world if we have abundance in wealth if we have abundance in children if we have abundance in our resources but my dear brothers what we need to strive for what we need to work towards is the concept of baraka how this barakat can come into my life how this barakat can come into my living how this barakat can come into my household and so that i can gain benefit it is something of a potential that is within us but it is dormant to instigate that things we need to do some amal these amal will induce baraka in our life in our decisions in our uh, matters so what we need to really strive for 
is not kasrat. We need to strive for barkat, barkat in our children, barkat in our wealth, barkat in our matters, barkat in our living, barkat in our household. And once this barkat comes into our lives, then all our problems will become small. All our things, our matters will become of ease. Our lives will become easy and peaceful. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about Laylatul Qadr. It is one night, just one night similar to other nights. But this night is of more barkat. This night, the deeds on this night is of more acceptance, of, is of more reward. Similarly, this is something we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And one of the things to instigate barkah is to stop the leakages as I mentioned before. And what are those leakages? Leakages are any kind of sin, any kind of displeasement that we do towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Any kind of sin, outward sin, inner sin, sin that we do when we are alone or sin when we do when we are in majlis. All types of sins needs to be removed, repented, ask for forgiveness if we want barkah in our lives. And to have peaceful life, it means that the, the life will have barkat in it. Somebody buys a 20-year-old car, a 10-year-old car and does not have to spend anything on that car. It's better than if he has to buy a new car with some faults and problems in it. The 20-year-old car, with, with, because of his amal, he doesn't have to spend on it. He doesn't have to go to mechanic again and again. That is of barkat rather than a new car which is giving him problems. So my dear brothers, let me quote you an example of Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Hazrat Abu Huraira, he came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he complained of his memory, he complained of his remembrance. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for him. That may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him good memory. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a long age. So he narrated most of the ahadith that comes into the traditional books of ahadith. Most of the hadiths are narrated by Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he, he saw the time period of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw the time periods of the four caliphs. And after his four caliphs as well, he was alive. And later on, during his old age, the caliph of Muslims was concerned that what about his memory? Is his memory still intact at the age of 100 years? So he called on to the caliph, he invited, the, he invited Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu to his palace and he organized a sermon, he organized a dars a hadith where Hazrat Abu Huraira was given respect and he was asked and he asked two scribes to sit at the back and write the narrations of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what Hazrat Abu Huraira was narrating. Hazrat Abu Huraira on coming to his palace and seeing the people, you know, wanting to seek ilm, wanting to seek knowledge, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated over 100 ahadith. And, they, and he was uh, you know, sent back with respect. Next year, because the caliph wanted to judge him, he called him again. And he said that people are still remembering those ahadith and those times when you came and narrated over 100 ahadith. So if you can narrate the same ahadith again and look at the barka in the memory of Hazrat Abu Huraira, that he repeated all 100 ahadith verbatim in the same sequence one by one. So this is actually what is meant by the barkah. That the things are not in, in large in numbers, but the things are in so much abundance that is satisfied, it is sufficient for the people. Similarly, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the dua of barakah to Hazrat Anas radiallahu anhu. Hazrat Anas radiallahu anhu was the khadim, was a companion of Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to help him in the household tasks. And he was given the barakah in, in his children, in his wealth. So much so that he said that I have so much of gold that when I used to pay the things in gold, I used to have bricks of gold that I used to hammer it down to break it. Imagine in today's world, who have this much wealth? So this was the barka due to the amal, due to the duas of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Similar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for us as well. If we have the same amal of the companions of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will ensure, we will induce it in our lives that we will have this, this task, we will have these barakah in our lives. And he's, Hazrat Anas saw more than 100 of his children and grandchildren. And there are four things to induce this barakah in our lives. And one of the foremost things is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tabaraka ismu rabbik, 
that your the name of allah subhanahu wa taala is babarkat so much so that that the hour will not be there the qiyama will not be there until and unless there is one person on this faith of earth who will be remembering allah subhanahu wa taala doing zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala so remember if we do the zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala we indulge ourselves in zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala in prayer of allah subhanahu wa taala how much barka are we getting in our life a sahabi came to holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he asked ayyul amal afzal which of the amal is most beloved to allah subhanahu wa taala and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied the prayer in its time meaning the prayer with the jama the prayer that we pray with jama is of barka is of mercy is of raham of allah subhanahu wa taala similarly he asked what's next and that is the second thing birul walidain taking care of our elders uh, the uh, it is said that barakat is there in our akabir taking care of our elders obeying our elders if we if we respect our elders if we ask our elders if we take care of our elders the barakah will increase if we increase in our disobediences in refuting our akabir in refuting the elders the barakah in our matters will decrease similarly look at the example of hazrat abais al qarni he was so much blessed by allah subhanahu wa taala that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told his companions that when you see hazrat abais qarni ask allah subhanahu wa taala ask him to pray to allah subhanahu wa taala for your forgiveness and then the third thing is the recitation of the holy quran if we recite the holy quran nothing brings a person closer to allah subhanahu wa taala than the recitation of holy quran hada zikrun mubarakun anzalnahu that this is a zikr which is mubarak which is of barakat which is of blessing which is of abundance which is of barakat and the last and final thing is dua and charity that we ask allah subhanahu wa taala for the duas and we ask allah subhanahu wa taala and we spend in the ways of allah subhanahu wa taala this dua we talk about it too much but less is what we ask and when we ask allah subhanahu wa taala we should ask allah subhanahu wa taala in accordance to his shan the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that when you ask allah subhanahu wa taala for jannah don't just ask about jannah ask for the better one ask for jannah tul firdaus ask allah subhanahu wa taala according to his ability to give you and he can give you and grant you anything look at the dua of hazrat sulaiman alaihi salam he asked for a kingdom that none of him none of the likes of him had even had before or will have after him so it's no problem if we ask allah subhanahu wa taala for the dunya and the deen but the main thing is the barka allah subhanahu wa taala accept duas of the muttaqin of the people who are of taqwa who accept the message of islam and who who take who guide their inner selves and who strive towards allah subhanahu wa taala and following the commandments of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam may allah subhanahu wa taala give barakah in all our matters may allah subhanahu wa taala give us barakah in our deen may allah subhanahu wa taala give barakah in our dunya in our wealth in our children may allah subhanahu wa taala accept what has been said and give us tawfiq to do amal alhamdulillah